Hello, everyone. This is Troy Lamel Stovall, the CEO and Executive Director of Maryland's TEDCO. Once again, welcome to TEDCO Talks. And I am, uh, I can't tell you how much I'm excited about today's conversation. We'll probably go, I know we're going to run out of time. I'm, I'm already convinced of that. But I'm excited <laughs> to talk to uh, Dr. Elizabeth Cho for Teak. I got that right, right? I got that you right. Did. I got that right. It just rolled right off. Thank it sure did. Right. <laughs> Um, uh, the uh, director for uh, Meta Angels, and we'll talk more about what that means here in a little bit uh, for folks, particularly this is about funding and for access to capital and that. But Elizabeth, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's been a, a few call, talks. I've, I've enjoyed them. I'm going to enjoy our future talks. Uh, and going to enjoy today. Why don't you give the folks a, a sense of kind of your, a little bit of your journey? We talked a little bit about your journey of an Asian woman in this in this field, and you, you've got a, a, an amazing career, both on the science side and now on the investing side. So give folks a sense of, of that career. Sure, and thank you very much, first of all, Troy, for the invitation to TED Talks, uh, TEDCO Talks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> See, there you go. TED Talks. <laughs> it's TED Talks. Um, I'm very pleased to be here today. So yes, like you said, I am a um, scientist turned angel investor. It took a lot of time, a lot of energy. Sometimes I feel <laughs> I'm, you know, always balancing, but it's made it fun. Mm -hmm. My background is as a PhD and um, uh, in a nutshell, I understand gene regulation. That's <laughs> what I was trained in, whether it's for cancer or mm -hmm. a neuro disease, that's the foundation. And I went from academia to industry, um, and biotech and working at startups, you know, understanding the operational needs and the money needs and the experimental needs to get something to market. But um, so that was the bulk of my career. And I'd say over the past 10 years, I've been dabbling in angel investing, having been a member of several groups. So I got to learn the process of it and beyond dilute, non dilutive funding, which is a big part of life science funding, as you know. Um, and then a few of my physician investor friends and I decided to come together and form Meta Angels, mm -hmm. which is a healthcare focused um, angel investor group, because that's what we know. And, um, and we are, we decided this from the vantage of being the customers ourselves. Mm -hmm. We will understand whether a product will have a need because that is one of the critical points, right? And why some uh, don't make it because there's not a market. So we can immediately assess the potential, um, uh, you know, customer um, traction and market space for an internship. So that, that's my journey in a nutshell. No, no, and it's, it's a great journey. Again, I, I would encourage folks to learn more about you because you can, I mean, I, I want several places we could go with this, but let me kind of double click on one of them because um, I think it's important for some of our listeners, and as you and I talked about, there, there's a woman out there, there's an Asian woman out there, there's a black woman out there who's, who's seeing you and they can see elements of their career or their path in you, um, but they are frustrated by a variety of things being in the academic space, as you mentioned, or the corporate world, or even in, in, in the startup world. Give them some things that, as you face those hurdles, as you face those challenges, how you were able to, to overcome. Sure. And I hope whatever I say, whatever I'm wearing or looking like uh, <laughs> might definitely inspire someone. So again, thank you for this um, opportunity. You know, the path to where I am now took a long time. It was not overnight. So you have to put in the work, you know, um, it's, it's not going to happen with a snap of the fingers. I just graduated. I've got this degree and that degree. And now I can just, you know, make everything happen. It doesn't work like that. And that's the reality in life across no matter what, right? Mm -hmm. So you got to put in the effort. And um, having done that, um, along the way, I'm the kind of person, it's probably why I'm an investor, I don't mind the risk, I'll jump, you know, mm -hmm. and I will bug people to find out what's what are you working on? What are you doing? And I will go out of my comfort zone. I always have and um, go into areas that I don't know much about, but have a curiosity about. And, um, and I will learn, like, you don't see too, too many scientists, pure scientists um, at angel meetings, uh, although I'm not dissuading that, but um, 
if you want to enter into investing from um, having roots in science or the other way around, mm -hmm. you have to put yourself out. So it's a self challenge. And, uh, but, you know, once you do that, um, and you, you know, put in the effort and work, there are plenty of people around who are going to be willing to help. So, the, yes. The, the word you didn't say, but at least what I, what my ears heard, uh, both in your career and as a scientist and, and, and as an investor is the word risk. The word risk was resonating with me. And, 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 and I think part of what I, again, as a black man, part of, as I look at others who are looking at this, there, there's a risk aversion, there's a high risk aversion, and, and there's a way to run away from the risk. And so I think part of this is how to help people see the risk, manage the risk, and, and not be afraid of the risk. That's an important word. And um, Troy, I'd love to ask, you know, what risks were you willing to take? We may have certain elements that are the same. Yeah. Um, you can't be afraid to fail. Yeah. In fact, you should embrace um, failures as a way to learn. And like, okay, I need to go over this hurdle now. And every time you overcome the hurdles, the risk feels less intimidating. And what you get back in exchange is um, uh, movement forward in your own progress, you know? So don't be afraid, but you, you need to have a certain personality inclination mm -hmm. and um, realize the people who've uh, made it, they probably fell a million times, you know? Um, so it's effort and a desire and uh, not feeling fearful of failing seeing failure as a, it, from a different perspective, as a mechanism to learn and um, clear the path forward for you. That's, no, I, I think that- That's exactly right. And, and, and that's, I mean, from when I first got into the venture game, I, uh, I was managing a family investment office. And uh, so I went out to, we were uh, LPs in a number of, uh, you know, the Sand Hill venture capital firms. Oh, yeah. so I got to talk to, you know, these legends who are just, you know, amazing individuals made a crap load of money. And they told me exactly that. They told me a number of things, but one of the things they taught me is that they have failed more than they won, but their successes have obviously monetarily been bigger than their losses. But they were willing to risk and are willing to, to have a failure. And because they learned more from their failures than, than the gains they got from the, the wins, is what they told me. Absolutely. And that goes for entrepreneurs too. You know, they probably, you know, try to run up that slide. <laughs> I keep running back, falling backwards. And I think part of my training and ability to embrace failure came from being a scientist. 80, 90% of our experiments go, Oosh. and we walk around with a bloody head and yet we come back for more the next day. I got used to that. And I think that um, inured me to failure, mm -hmm. which I have to be thankful for my training. Absolutely correct. You know. So I want to go back to something you, you said about uh, what you do, meet the angels. Um, that's a term many people may not know, this no notion of angel investing and angel funding. Won't you help folks understand where that sits and what that is? Sure. Angel investing um, is individuals like you, me, my mm -hmm. mom, whomever, <laughs> investing on their own. Usually it's um, very helpful to be a member of a group because there are many brains there, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to look at the risk of an investment in an opportunity, a company from various angles, 10 maybe. Mm -hmm. The technology, the team, the patents, the market, the finance. So if you're part of a, a group, which is the recommended way, I think for um, investors in general, uh, angel investors, you learn from each other and you learn um, the totality of a risk before uh, you determine whether to invest or not. Mm -hmm. So angel investors come typically early on at the seed or um, uh, a little bit later series A type of investment, which is our comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And um, we, although the landscape has changed a lot, I think VCs mm -hmm. and even private equity have come in earlier in the maturation of a company for investment. But angels typically still come early on in um, the maturation of a company. Um, so that's where we sit. And um, I do recommend people who are just starting out um, to join a group. 
you become friends, you learn, and uh, it, it's a wonderful um, opportunity networking-wise too. To, to the entrepreneur who's looking for you and looking for how do they find you? So we are, mm, word of mouth always helps, right? Mm -hmm. But if they don't know us, a good um, resource in general is the Angel Capital Association. That's like our uh, association. Mm -hmm. On their website, freely available, is a list of all the angel groups. And there are don't quote me, but I think more than 400. You can go click, 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 click. And uh, they are divided um, by regions too. And uh, that can help uh, winnow down um, your selection. And um, you click on their website and almost all of us have a portal through which an application can be submitted. Good. And so to, to kind of finish up the, the point Elizabeth was making, so as Tedco, we're, we're usually an early seed, pre-seed or seed, or we even do some Series A investing and we co-invest many times with other angels, uh, like, like me to angels, uh, depending on the, the timing. Uh, so for folks that are listening, uh, there's this kind of normal kind of pathways and a, you know, normally it's kind of a pre-seed uh, funding, maybe through friends and family that you're, or self-funding that you do. And after you kind of have some concepts, or some ideas, you kind of then bring that along to folks, people like Tedco or Angels, who might help you do kind of that transition to a launch and or actually get it or be launched uh, into a C Series A or, or beyond. So, so folks that are listening, kind of understanding that that lineage and that traject that pipeline of how these funding cycles work. And Elizabeth's right is there's more and more folks looking at these early stage deals, but as the the word there is risk, there is more risk when it's uh, earlier. And so we're expecting a higher return because we're taking on more risk. That's right. So, you know, Techco is a wonderful part of um, this regional ecosystem in the Maryland area. And we have invested in a number of Techco uh, pre-seed like investments. It's a, it's a absolute natural um, trajectory, right? We hear you, you take the higher risk for us. Thank you very much. Um, and then we may potentially follow on. So mm -hmm. we are so happy. Uh, and we always look to Techco to partner and what deals have you seen and what's coming down the pike. And, uh, and uh, we become um, co-investors. Absolutely. Team, right? correct. And become part of the family. And um, it, it's uh, thank you for being around. <laughs> the, well, thank you, and, and for for what you and your team do. And so you you had another word that I want folks to kind of get. Again, we're kind of playing some definitions games. You said non dilutive, and I think that's an importance, particularly in some of the stuff that you uh, the media invest in. Help folks understand what that non dilutive part of the capital stack looks like. Sure, non dilutive is when um, typically it's um, government funded opportunities mm -hmm. like. The NIH mm -hmm. is a big funder, as everyone knows, of um, life science or you know healthcare type of grants. And when a company or startup gets that, um, the government doesn't want anything <laughs> back. That's why they don't get diluted. That is um, the strict definition. We love that, obviously, because the investors uh, have less um, dilution as a result of that. But it's for me as a scientist, I know what it means to get a grant. Mm -hmm. Woo! It means that the scientific peer review panel with some business folks on it, especially for the SBIR like grants, they validated, they approved of your concept and your um, data, whatever it was that you presented to them. So that tells me scientifically, there are some legs to this invention. And Thank that you. helps me um, it helps to de-risk it for me. Of course, Absolutely. I still do my diligence on the technical end too, but it's a big deal when I yeah. see it. Absolutely. And so just for folks to know, if, you know, if they visit the TEDCO website, one of the one of our uh, more exciting programs is our SBIR. We kind of have a little university where we actually can help you understand exactly what Elizabeth talked about, how to write those grants and how to position yourself. And she's right. Having another set of independent eyes say, Hey, there's some, there's a there, there, there's a here, here. That gives us as investors a, a kind of a check mark that says, okay, this there's a smell test that's Absolutely. at least passed. Exactly. Um, and, and being able to, and 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 what she's mean by dilution is as opposed to someone taking five, 10, 15% of your company, 
that doesn't happen. You get capital without having to give up any ownership stake in your company. So again, non-dilutive, it's a great way. And as an investor, it's great for me because you get money without my, my, my ownership stake going down. That's right. Our government can be wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. look, let's, let's, let's have a, a little bit more about Elizabeth, if I may. So, you know, let's kind of go back um, January of 2020. I'm sure you started, you had like a lot of us, you had your plans for the year of 2020. You had kind of mapped out your strategy, the things you were going to do. And then it hits and everything gets, you know, thrown out the proverbial window. So I guess now we're basically a year later at this, at this point uh, from that moment. What are some things that you've done that are a little different because of this that you see yourself continuing, you know, once we get out of this? Um, and, and, and how have you managed or yourself, both personally and professionally, kind of managed some things uh, during this time? Yes. Ah, yes, right. <laughs> so um, I have become a Zoom meister, right? <laughs> <laughs> we all. <laughs> you know, I am based, Meta Angels is based in DC because I'm here. Mm -hmm. But my co-founders are in Baltimore, Philadelphia, and San Francisco. And the way we had planned it would, was going to be, um, we always had it half in person, our pitch sessions, and half virtual. Because mm -hmm. we have quite a number of physicians who work, you know, long hours, right? So evenings is when we gather. So um, the virtual is very helpful anyway. But we were going to plan out, okay, a little road show. Oh, we'll have a meeting in Philly, a meeting in San Fran. No, it didn't <laughs> happen. So we just went all virtual. We sort of had a pretty good um, handling of Zoom, but my God, I had to step it up a notch. So <laughs> we went all virtual and I think we all got used to it. So in terms of operations, that's how it went. Sadly, we couldn't meet some of the startups face to face, which yeah. is, um, you know, the downside uh, for all of us, right? Um, this human connection. Um, but, you know, we, we got around it. And um, with the investments that we've made, especially in the med device space, where you need to touch and feel, mm -hmm. somebody on our team got a sample and was able to. We, we need that validation still. We need to kick it around, literally. Mm -hmm. well, not that much, literally. Um, but um, the other parts were SaaS, and that we can do, you know, virtually. Mm -hmm. um, so that was the one element we couldn't meet face to face. And we can go to certain conferences, but you know, Zoom enabled a lot more as well. Mm -hmm. In fact, the, I feel overworked in a way because the expectation is you don't have to drive, you don't have to go, just click on the link. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, so that happened. And uh, for me personally, uh, I couldn't go to the gym as much. But, oh my God, the world of YouTube. Woo! <laughs> you know, all these free, amazing workout sessions and I got to work out more, and, which was good. Um, certain areas got improved more than ever. <laughs> Other places, no. But, um, you know, I learned, uh, what do you call it? CrossFit training, right? Oh, you did the CrossFit training? Things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Worked on the arms more. <laughs> so I would say I got to exercise more in different ways. That's not a bad thing. That's right? not a bad thing. So I've been talking to several several folks, you know, everyone's everything streamed now, like, you know, everything's streamed now. And so people are going back and looking at old series or old movies that, you know, what's that old series or old movie that you're ah see <laughs> that's that you <laughs> that you went back and, and started watching. <laughs> Honestly? Oh, of course. <laughs> Magnum PI. Oh, God, you, you really went way back. <laughs> deep dive. Deep dive to what was it, the 80s, maybe? Oh, my God. If I can't go to Hawaii, I will at least look at it. And it was hysterical. Magnum and Higgins and the two dogs, Zeus and Apollo. It was hysterical to rewatch. So and it threw me back funny. to old times. And it was, it was nice. So my wife has gotten hooked on the, between Charlie's Angels and Murder, <laughs> Murder She Wrote. <laughs> I understand those. Those were good times. 
<laughs> that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I mean, yeah, this whole streaming thing. I mean, the fact that you can, I, I, it's funny. I, we cut the cord probably two, two or three years ago for trying to save money. But now I, I know I'm not saving money because I've gotten all these, because I got two kids. I got all these streaming services and I, I can't even keep track of all the streaming services. I know. It's, it's, I know. it's amazing. It's amazing. Hey, as, as we kind of get to, I want to go back to this, this uh, larger conversation about diversity okay. um, and, 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 and allow you to talk to folks. Um, because again, the spaces you're in, particularly in medical devices and, and, and the bio space, there just aren't a lot of women, uh, not a lot of women of color. Uh, and so, but, but clearly they're addressing needs that affect those populations, you know, things like diabetes and hypertension and, you know, for, as a black sickle cell, things like that. So how do you talk to someone about, you know, how do you get more um, diversity in these spaces that need diversity to address some of the issues that those populations have? Do you mean a diversity from um, getting more funding for entrepreneurs? Is, is that what you mean? Or I think a little bit of both. I think because, yeah, this let me just a great way to since there is because there's diversity at a lot of different levels. You're right. Mm -hmm. um, there's the diversity of the talent bases in these companies that you and I are funding. How do we get more diversity of both of the founders and of the of their of their key staffers? And you're right. There's diversity of the funding elements as, as well. OK, so on the funding element, um, I think Yes, we've made some strides, but we have a long ways to go. And I think um, as angel investors, um, we are becoming much more uh, cognizant and we have to do our own part mm. to um, open our eyes more and um, not look just at the bottom line. In fact, we always look at the team first. You gotta have an A team, right? You gotta have an A team. And I think uh, the diversity helps bring in different viewpoints, which makes a, um, a company's uh, strategic thinking even better. So um, I think the incubators at the various mm -hmm. medical schools are doing a good, better job and they're trying to do their part. And that is how I get to see quite a number of deals too. And so, um, I look to see, uh, I do consciously look to see such uh, for such opportunities. And there are more programs uh, spotlighting more diverse um, entrepreneurs. So, um, but I have to do my part and I consciously try um, and not just look at the bottom line, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, we don't know if the bottom lines are going to pan out. You said something again back to when I did my visits to uh, the Sand Hill folks. Not only they're talking about risk, I mean, the failure part, but they said exactly what you just said, that they always, always invest in an A quality team mm -hmm. that may have a B quality plan, yeah. but never the reverse. That's never right. an A quality plan with B quality people because and it's one of the things, questions I always ask the team when we're, we're doing our due diligence is, is the, is the CEO, is the team coachable? Are they, do they see a, a can you think we're coachable? They, do they have the ability? So I'm curious to talk to our folks about that. It's not just having a great idea, but it's having a great idea that can be evolved to the next level. Oh, you hit on all those golden words, right? The A team that's coachable. They're A team because they are coachable mm -hmm. in a way, right? Mm -hmm. It's that personality to understand your weaknesses and uh, realize there are uh, people who have the experience and to be able to, um, uh, have that self-consciousness and ability to, um, uh, you know, follow leads that can put you towards success, right? Mm -hmm. And um, be the type that's not afraid to fail, but not too, too often, right? <laughs> <laughs> so coachability is everything. And as the older we get, the harder it is for us to change, right? But if you're still able, gosh, you're incredible. Yeah. And that's a great testament to that person. Yeah, um, so yes, and you glean that, you gather that in the interactions when you do the due diligence and uh, you do the reference checks. And mm -hmm. um, they, if even if it's a first time CEO, they may have had other um, challenges 
that it will speak to their personality, their coachability. And we look for that. We dig for that Good. during diligence. Outstanding. So Elizabeth, as you, you clearly been able to be successful in, in like I said, in a, in a couple of careers here, but we're, we're trying to make our way out of this, this COVID, you know, whatever the you know, pandemic and, and the economic fallout that's come from it. But if, if you had a chance or have you thought about kind of as you look beyond this, when we do get beyond this, what are some, of, what are some things that you think are gonna be exciting for us to kind of be looking at? Uh, so the example I use is, you know, when we came out of 9-11, um, you know, we had to change our behaviors around building security and airplane security. And, and, and the other analogy I use, Elizabeth, is, is we all had to walk, if you were flying, you had to have that three ounce bottle uh, yeah. to, to, to do. And so what's the, what's the three ounce bottle idea you see that's gonna be emerging? What's the new security you know, analogy that when we transition out of 9-11 that's gonna be emerging uh, to come out of COVID or it's already emerged? So yeah, good, very good question. Very deep question. Um, <laughs> I think, <laughs> no, really, uh, we're all wondering which way the pendulum, mm -hmm. the pendulum will swing um but how far to the left or right of that um original center will we be um speaking of health which mm -hmm. is what i know i think there will be more tele of everything yep right and now we've gotten very versed in even seniors on the telehealth and being able to switch back i think we're getting more agile mm -hmm. and i think the agility will be our three ounce bottle to flip from in-person to tele, which actually makes for even more market opportunities, right? Um, so I think that that will be the three ounce bottle, our ability to adapt, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, but it will also raise expectations of, well, why couldn't you make it? <laughs> yeah. You know? Yep. Yep. Um, and but it's more also demands gonna... on our time. More demands on our time. And, and, and then the question gets, because I agree with you, but did it also, you already had a digital divide uh, to, to certain demographics. And so do we even create more of a divide? But I think you're right, it's, you know, that, that convenience to some is still an inconvenience to others. Great point, I forgot about that. You know, I'm spoiled living in the city, right? And the expectation, yeah, yeah, I can make it, I can make it. But people in um, rural areas um, where the last mile hasn't quite made it yet, absolutely, that, that you know, that, stepping out of health education right mm -hmm. and um that could be impacted and i'm sure um th there may be areas of divide exactly for parents who are working and who have two little ones how can they manage always to log on for kindergarten on their own Absolutely. that's going to be hard so Absolutely. um i i was thinking more from a very um urban enabled center, which is not right. Thank you for pointing that out, um, Troy. So it's possible, yeah. But no, but the telehealth is coming. No, no, the telehealth is coming. I don't think there's a debate. Yeah. And I've had this conversation with folks around the whole, you know, probably you, like you, we all have moved to this model of a, a digital currency. You know, we, you know, I can't tell you the last time I touched the dollar bill because I can order everything digitally. I can get it delivered to me. Um, and so the whole digital currency is a real thing, but there's a ton of other people who don't have access to digital currency. That's right. No, um, it's yeah. And so how do you how do you bridge those things? But 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 it's coming, right? You can't. I think the floodgate has opened on the convenience factor that we've all created, you know, via Amazon and Uber Eats and everything else. Absolutely. Um, so that's there. That's going to stay. So then the question just is, how do we as investors, you know, obviously a take advantage of that, but b how do we put that to even more people as well? Yeah, we're gonna have to digitize even better yeah, to enable yeah, yeah. reach. Um, the last mile point will become uh, even more critical perhaps to um, prov you know, keep the divide from widening even more. Absolutely. Um, yeah, look, it's, it's gonna be very interesting to see it is. Uh, it where is. the chips fall. I agree. Elizabeth, thank you. I, I can't tell you, I'm so excited about this and what we're going to do together and just getting to know you better. And when we get a chance to actually get together. I, know, <laughs> right? I can't wait, Troy. I cannot wait. I'm so happy you're there at TEDCO. And 
I, I can't wait to see all my friends there again in, in the flesh. Absolutely, absolutely. Again, thank you for your time today. Really appreciate you. Appreciate all what you do uh, in, in this ecosystem here. And it's not just Maryland, but the DMV, because you guys really do cast a, a pretty broad net. Uh, and so we appreciate that. So again, I want to thank everyone for listening. Thank you all for the commentary we've been getting on TEDCO Talks. We really do appreciate all that. Uh, I want to thank, if I can, uh, our, our marketing team at TEDCO, uh, Cassie Haber and Tammy Thomas, who do a, just a super job of behind the scenes making this happen. So I appreciate all that they do. So again, this is again, Troy Lamel Stovall, TEDCO Talks. Have a great week. Talk, see you next week.